Hi folks, today we are going to be putting a new alternator on this Mark III Mondeo. This is a 2 litre TDDI diesel version. This is an estate car. And here's the new alternator. Keep watching. Right, okay then, so we've got a new alternator to put in this car. I've had the car off the road while I've been doing some other work on it and we didn't charge the battery up and it started up all right. We went down the road, I put the, the fan blower on full because I was trying to get some circulation going around the water system and also had the radio on as well. And the battery warning light come on inside the car. I turned the car off, went to start it up again, click, nothing. So we had to jump start the car to get it home. But what we first checked out was if the battery was being charged by the alternator and to do that you need a multimeter so let's just show you what i did to find out if we're charging and let's go through that procedure now right well as you can see i've got the lid off the battery now the the battery cover and we've got the positive terminal and the negative terminal and i'll try to put that up there so you can see it there we go so if i put that on the negative there and the positive there you'll probably see that without the engine running we've got 12.46 volts on the battery and that's without the car running. So if I start the car now, remember we've got 12.46 volts there. Right, I'll just put that there so you can see that again. So if I put the same battery terminals across, you can see there I've got 12.04 volts. And even less there, the voltage is actually going down. Now I should have about 13.4 to 14.4 volts uh, to show that the battery's being charged. So it seems like there's a problem with the charging circuit. Right, okay then. So here we are under the front driver's side wheel and the alternator basically lives up here and there's a plastic cover in place which we've got to take out. And that involves taking off uh, some bolts here. So I'm gonna just whip this off. And what else we've got to take out? We've got to disconnect the the uh, track rod arm from the steering rod so we've got to take that out there and possibly even the uh, the drop link uh, bar as well we've got to take out as well so these are things I'm going to probably have to move out of the way so I'm going to get this inside cover out now and if we come in and take a look up there there is the alternator right okay so just that you can see what we're dealing with this is the actual way the alternator goes in and first of all, we've got to take this top bolt out, which for all intents and purposes is literally down here. I can get my hand on it there. I can see my hand there. Probably not, but it's on there behind the little plastic cowling. And it looks like, uh, I don't know what size it is. I'm gonna to have to undo it from here anyway. So that's what I'm gonna do first. And that's the cable that I've actually disconnected with a 10 mil socket from underneath. And if you can just look at the cable connector there, as you can see, it's got a little clip here on this side because you can't actually, you're working at arm's length when you undo that. So you can't just literally pull it off. You've got to put a screwdriver down in the side there in that little hole there by the looks of it. And that will release a clip so you can pull it off. Otherwise you've just got your hand in there blind basically and you don't know what you're doing. So come in that side with a little screwdriver and that should then just pull off. And also, You've got a tensioner mechanism, which you probably can't see down here at the moment. And on my one, it's got a square shaft, which you, you can't really access from the top there. And in the manual, uh, they say it can either be a square shaft, a hexagon or whatever, but on my one, it's a square shaft. And the way to get to it is under the front here. And you can't quite see it there, but there is a square uh, hole in the pulley wheel there. And you're supposed to get, it says in the manual, get a ratchet, <laughs> easier said than done. Put a ratchet in there and then you can turn this clockwise and that will detension this pulley wheel against that spring there. And you can then lift the bolt off, uh, the belt off. But um, it's not gonna be that simple. I'm gonna have to make some sort of little stubby tool up in there to get a square shaft in there so that I can actually detension that belt and uh, take the tension off the belt to get the, the new belt on as well. 
So yeah, that's what I've got to do there. So I'm going to work on that at the moment and I'll come back to you in a second. Right, I've got a socket, 13 mil, down in here. And you undo that top nut first. It's quite an awkward one. There's a little cable tie above it, a little plastic cable tie, which you've got to basically prise out the way. And uh, then you're able to undo the bolt really fiddly. But I've got the nut undone now, so um, not the easiest thing to get out this blinking alternator by the looks of it. And as I say, I've still got the hassle of detention in this drive belt yet, which I haven't quite got over. As you can probably see, with the limited light you've got there, not an easy thing to get on. And not much swing room as well for the uh, socket. As I say, this is just the top mounting bolt, there's the ones at the bottom. Let's get that out of there now. There's only three mounting bolts for the alternator. Right, here, out it comes. Here we go. Now as you can see, there's that plastic clip there. And when that's in its correct position, you can't get the blinking socket on it. So you, I've had to bend it up out the way. And look, it was broken anyway. Someone's obviously had it out before. But either that or you've got to pull that little plug out there. So that's just a warning. Bend that clip up, get that cable tie out of the way, and don't bother putting that on again, because that'll give you all sorts of grief. It's going back in like that, so lose that. <laughs> right, so that's the top bolt out of the alternator. I'm still left with the top cable and the tensioning mechanism down here somewhere. I don't know whether you can see down there. Let me try and zoom in. Now, as you can probably see, just coming into focus now, it's a little square hole. And that's supposed to be a quarter drive, and you're supposed to get a quarter drive ratchet in there. But you can't get one in the gap there. So as you can see, there's not much depth of gap there, as you can probably see down there. So I'm probably going to have to try and make up some little stud affair to go in there, so I can get a ratchet. And you need to turn that clockwise, and that will push that pulley wheel down, and that will detension the belt. So that little shank there is where you've got to detension the belt by putting something in there and then turning it clockwise, detention the belt, lift the belt off. And then you've got the, coming under here, you've got these two bolts at the bottom, which are the bottom ones that hold the pulley on, uh, the alternator, sorry. And apparently on the diesel model, you've got to take the studs out as well. And that's why I would presume that these have got hex uh, torque stud heads on them so you can undo the studs. I don't think the petrol version's got them, so you can just undo the, no, uh, the nuts there and uh, move it off. So. I've got to do that, but as I say, I've still got to detension this belt somehow. I'll get back to you on that one, but apparently it's just these two nuts now, that socket up there, which I can't quite see at the moment, and detention the belt. Right, well, I'm gonna try something a little different now. I'm gonna use a crowbar, and I've just looked at this mechanism, the way it works, and I think I can get a crowbar in there and lever it against the other part of the uh, mechanism there and perhaps to detention the belt. So I'm gonna have a little go at that. <sighs> Right, well it's detention in it. I'll show you what I'm doing in a minute. I'm just going to try and ease the belt off. Again, there's not much room to do anything here. To get your hands in. Right, well my method does work. I've just done it. I've just, I'll show you what I've done now. I'll slip the belt off. I was trying to pull the belt over the top pulleys and the bottom pulleys. It tells you to take it off the drive pulley, which is the big bottom one on the crank. You can't get it off. What you've got is an intermediate little jockey wheel with no ridges on it. and but when you slip your hand up from underneath of the car, you literally just flick it off. And let me try and show you. You might be able to just see, where is it? If I can get my hand on it. Here, I want my, my hand spinning on it now. You can just flick it off of the top there. And as you can see, I've got the belt off now. And it's literally just a matter of pulling it all the way off around all of the other pulleys. Now that tension's off, I can actually take that mechanism out. And if I just show you where I've wedged it, there we go. I've basically just got a crowbar. I can take the tension off of this now. Bear with me. I'll get that bit of wood out of the way first. There we go. That's out of the way. Now, you can probably see there now, there's that jockey wheel above and the one below. A crowbar fits just in there. It don't spring a lot, but it's just enough to, let's get that out of there now. There we go, that come out now. But as you can see, it's just enough to get the whole belt off. 
and that's without any special tools. I'm just gonna thread this belt off now and I'll come back to you in a second. But yeah, there's no way you're getting a tool in there, a socket wrench as they say in the manual, so that's the way I'll get over it. With the end of a crowbar like that, just dropped in at an angle, just enough to get it in there and levering the bottom pulley down against this aluminium pulley there and then wedging it open by just putting a bit of wood in there and that's held it and that's allowed me to detension the belt by slipping it off of the little intermediary wheel which hasn't got any ridges on it as you can see this wheel's got a ridge on it and you can't lift it up over that because of these ridges on the actual pulley that little intermediate wheel down there which you can't quite see hasn't got no ridges on it because the belt runs over the back of it and you can just flick it off with your fingers and then the rest will come off and it don't tell you that in the manual believe me right i'm going to slip the belt off now see you in a minute right okay then so i've taken off the two 15 mil nuts that hold the alternator on technically speaking i can withdraw the alternator now i can actually do that if, it, if this was a petrol engine you'd be fine but because it's a diesel you have to take these studs out and these studs have got a torx end on them which is a, a t8 so by the way when you take the 15 mil bolts on that retain you really want a deep reach socket because you've got the stud in the way obviously so there's that so i've got to take the studs out now and those are a t8 bit as i just mentioned to you there we go so let me just whip these out and i'll be back with you in a second now as i say i'm i should be taking off this track rod arm apparently but um i'm not doing that for the moment because i, I just want to try and see this terminal see if i can get to this terminal from here because i didn't have good access to it from above you see and i want to disconnect that cable Ah, oh, got it got it what a bloody nuisance that was oh ridiculous right that's that bit out now and i don't think that i can get it out here without um taking off that um thing as i said so this has to come out of the way and leave that back so that can come out as you can see so i'm just going to unloosen that leave that across and then this old uh, alternator will come out right 15 mil mil just on the there we go that's just dropped out like that move that right over to one side and let's try and just get that alternator out of there if it's all possible or do I need to take the drop link out as well Come on, don't make me take the drop link out. There we go, it does come out of there. Look, you don't need to take the drop link out. Not on that one anyway. Some of them are a bit wider, I think, but you may have to there. Right, that's it. That's out, look. That socket was a right nuisance to get hold of. Bearings are running a bit dry. As you can probably hear. And I've got to take this cowling off. There. Put it on the new one and let's get it back in. Right, okay then, it's the next day now. I've just come off the computer. I've been having a chat with Pete Froud. If you're watching this, Pete, I did get outside, as you can see. I said I'm gonna finish this off today. Now, as you know, I've got the old belt, which I can't get off at the moment. And I've had a little look online, and the reason being is that you've actually got to take the adjuster off as well. So um, I couldn't see that yesterday because I didn't have no sort of external light. Well, I've got the temporary light rigged up out here now. So apparently you have to take off the, or slacken the adjuster which bolts on to the same place as where the uh, alternator bracket bolts on the one which we took off so um, I'm gonna get underneath now with a light and have a look at that and other people recommend that you actually take off the, um, the top engine mount on this side and lower the engine a little bit I'm probably not gonna do that but that's what I may come up against and if so I'll have to take that off as well and hold the uh, the uh, trolley jack under the engine just to take the weight of it while I drop it down a little bit 
So that's what we may come up against, as I said to you. So let's get under, in, underneath now and have a look at undoing this tensioner mechanism so that we can slide the belt off. Right, well I don't know how much, if anything, of this you can see, but there's a big aluminium, how's that? Can you see it? Big aluminium bracket there, and it's got three 13 mm uh, bolts going through it. And apparently those are the bolts which we've got to undo, which slacken off or so that you can remove the adjuster. We have to do that because we need to slide the belt behind the back of the adjuster so that we can get it off. That's if you're putting a new belt on. If you're just putting the old belt back on, you obviously don't have to go through that. But because I've got a new belt, I've got to take the, uh, or slacken them three 13 mil bolts off so that I can get the adjuster off. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Right, hopefully you can see that. Because <laughs> I can't really see it properly, but uh, we'll give it a go anyway. on these bloody bolts. Fucking tight. Right, I've been at that one bolt for over half an hour. I've got the other one undone and there's still one more to go apparently. I can't see that one at the moment. And I think, see I've, <laughs> the situation I'm in is restricted workspace and lack of the, the right tools, I would imagine. If I had a, a small air gun, which I haven't got, I've got my one's a very big one, it wouldn't get in there. That would be buzzed off in no time because you'd have it up on the ramp. There's plenty of access from underneath, right underneath and up where you can get an air gun in, but not the one I've got, I've got a very big one. So a small air gun would have just zipped that off in no time. So you've got to make do with what you've got and what I'm gonna to have to do is to leave the old belt on, unfortunately. Now, I will keep the, uh, the new one, but um, the old one looks okay, but it's just as a matter of precaution, I was doing it anyway. So I'm gonna to have to put the old belt back on. I'm gonna do that oven that up, I've undone, and um, we're gonna persevere. You might come across that. So all I'm saying here, lesson learned here, is don't cut your belt off unless it's really, really necessary. In other words, you know that you can get them mounting bolts undone because if I round that bolt off trying to do what I'm doing at the moment, there's no way anyone else will get off. Then it'll have to be ground off and that causes all sorts of other problems with drilling out the, the remaining hole and stuff. So know when to stop and know when to move on. Now, as I say, I don't really need to change the belt, so I'm not gonna change it now. And that may have to get done at a f further time if and when I get a small impact air gun smaller than the one I've got. So that's what I'm gonna to have to do in this situation. So I'm gonna start putting things back together now and let's get this car back on the road. Well, we've got the belt on. You would not believe how difficult. You know those Chinese puzzles you get? If you get it fed around the wrong way of the alternator bracket, you're in all sorts of trouble. You will never get it on. We've had the belt upside down, back to front, twisted it round, 
so that it just didn't look right but that is a devil and, and we just tried one more thing and pulled it through this way and suddenly it went right so we knew it had to go back on because it's the way it come off but getting it it's been about an hour trying to sort that out this job has been a right nightmare so i've got the alternator now bolted back in the electrics is connected back up now i've just got to now take uh, take put the tension back on the, the uh, tension the jockey wheel and then hopefully just slide it underneath the belt under the smoothest roller in the middle which is right underneath this engine mount so I'm going to do the same as I've done before with the old uh, crowbar as you remember that I tension that up like that that jockey wheel and I put a bit of wood in there and that keeps it tensioned so then you've got to slide your hand somehow I can't remember if I've done it from below as you can see the back of the jockey wheel there that's where this engine mounted would be probably better off out of the way as what other people have suggested god that's so near that's it it's on there, you are. there we go they're on now i'm just making sure that it's all on the rest of the pulley and now i'm going to take out my detensioning tool <laughs> and that should tension the belt back up oh The belt is under full tension again there. Just going, making sure that it's on all the teeth all the way around. Yes, we're back on. That alone today is probably, although you haven't, you've seen a condensed version of it, it's taken about two and a half hours today. And that's, we've not succeeded in getting the bracket out for the uh, alternator to change the belt. Because as I say, you have to come from right underneath. It's okay if you've got a, a, a pit or, or get the car higher up in the air. And then you've got a small air socket which can go in it and quickly buzz them off quick. I've tried a 13mm, which are 13mm bolt heads. I've tried a 13mm socket and I've even tried to tap a, a half inch bolt uh, socket on there and that didn't want to know either on one of them. The other one come undone as you probably saw there, but you may come up against the same. So for God's sake, don't cut your old belt off until you definitely know you can get that adjuster bracket off and then three bolts that hold that on. Because failing that, you're going to be in all sorts of trouble and your car will be off the road. Right, okay, so I'm just going to finish off now and then we'll start it up in a second. So I'm just going to put the wheel on, you ain't got to see that. Put the tyre red back, uh, back on and have a little clear up, so I'll see you in a minute. Battery's connected back up. Let's try it out. Battery voltage before. We, uh do anything across the belt battery. 12.53 volts there, there we go, that's with the engine off. And we check that, make sure that bolt is, uh at the bolt, the uh, belt is actually looking okay as well. Yes! I'm happy at last! So, there you go. All I can say is, is that if you're going to tackle an alternator, the hardest part of the job that you're going to come up against is one, detensioning the uh, mechanism to slide the belt off. You saw how I got over that. There's many different ways of doing it. In the manual, they say just a quarter drive socket will go in there, then you can detension it. That didn't really work out that way because you really need two hands to sort of manipulate stuff. And doing it the way I've done it with a crowbar and a block of wood leaves both hands free to prise the belt on. That's one thing. The second thing is, is undoing the bolts that hold the tensioner on if you're going to change the belt. Now, as you say, I had problems with just one bolt there I couldn't undo and that buggered up the whole job. But lucky enough, I didn't cut the old belt off. The old belt was in good condition anyway. It's just that seeing as I had it off, I was going to change it anyway. But I've actually failed on that part of the job, but you might come up against the same problem. But you can save yourself a whole lot of headaches by just leaving the old belt on until you know that you're ready to uh, undo all them nuts are going to come undone. And the third thing, which was the problem, and we spent about an hour doing this, was working out the root of the belt going back on and unfortunately especially with the diesel version you have to slide the belt around the alternator bracket to try and slide it off 
but then you lose where you are. And don't forget, there's about six or seven different pulleys there. And something happened, I don't know how we've done it, but it's like one of those Chinese puzzles where you've got a sort of untangled two circles or two loops or whatever, then suddenly they just happen. It's exactly the same with a belt, and they don't tell you that in the manual. So we've got the job done now, we're fully charging again now, and I'm now going to go in for a well-deserved cup of tea, wash my hands, sit down, watch a bit of telly. And tomorrow is another day. See you later. Bye for now.